Diabetes has become so common in India that virtually every family has to learn to deal with it. But is it really so difficult to live with diabetes? To tell you more about this, we have a distinguished panel of stalwarts for you today, who between them have a combined experience of more than 100 years of helping their patients with diabetes lead healthy and normal lives. So to my left is Professor Subhankar Chaudhary, who is the Chief of Endocrinology at PGI Kolkata. Dr. Subhash Wanganu, respected senior endocrinologist, uh, currently at Apollo Hospital in New Delhi. Professor Zargar uh, from Srinagar, who was the director of the Shere Kashmir Institute and Dr. Shashank Joshi, the president of the Endocrine Society of India from Bombay. So we really have lots of wisdom in this panel today. And I will start first with Dr. Shubhankar Chaudhary. Dr. Chaudhary, in so many years you've treated thousands of patients. What are the common reactions that you get from your patients when they're diagnosed with diabetes first? Well, the reactions obviously vary depending on the personality. But we do see certain patterns and uh, one of the first reactions quite often is uh, disbelief, denial. And uh, I do remember clearly not too long ago, a senior politician of the city was given a diagnosis of diabetes with a glucose of 300 there thereabouts. He immediately lodged a complaint with the <laughs> la lab saying, you must be wrong. I can't have diabetes. <laughs> so that is one of the first reactions. Having, uh, once the diagnosis sort of sinks in, uh, quite often people tend to get a bit dismayed, why me, especially amongst the younger groups, uh, we do see, why not my friends, why I am only affected with diabetes. Uh, and, and then sometimes there is a feeling of anxiety, how to deal with it, sometimes anger. And for families, with a small child diagnosed with diabetes, sometimes it's the parents who uh, sort of uh, have a feeling of guilt or they tend to blame themselves. So there's uh, different types of reactions. So, so really, as they say, attitude determines everything and really how you face up to your diabetes initially will determine a lot of how you will go on in, in your life with diabetes. So there's a lot of varied reaction, Dr. Wangnu, as you're well aware. What do you think, why do people react like that? The main reason is basically the lack of awareness, education. People don't know that if they develop diabetes, they can live happily as long as compared to the non-diabetic counterparts if they control the diabetes very well. So awareness, 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 and education about diabetes, that it can be managed very well without letting the patient to do something different. So, so essentially, we don't let the diabetes control us. We oh, need yes. to control the diabetes. Absolutely. That's a, that's a very good message. We need to control our diabetes, not let diabetes control, control us. us. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Zargar, you know, many times we've all seen that patients are as scared of the medicine as they are of, of the disease itself. So, so tell me, when does one really start medication in people with diabetes? You know, in general, in most of the cases, uh, common garden variety type of uh, type 2 diabetes, we give a try to lifestyle change for six weeks to three months and see how the blood sugars behave. And if after that period we make a decision that um, blood sugars have not normalized or they are not there where we want them to be, then we have no choice but to start with medication. But there will be many situations where we will have to make this decision much earlier than wait for those three months for lifestyle stay. Somebody having very high blood sugar, such banker was just noticing somebody having a fasting blood sugar of 300, you will not wait that long. Or somebody having type 1 diabetes mellitus, you are talking about 
uh, an emotional impact of youngsters having diabetes, kids having diabetes. There we do not have that latitude of waiting for that. And straight we're starting on medication. Or women uh, who develop uh, diabetes during pregnancy, gestation diabetes, and uh, then there isn't that huge latitude in a lot of time to wait for lifestyle changes to take place and give uh, control of the diabetes. So we might have to shorten the decision of giving drugs to such patients. But in most of the common garden variety patients, after three months, we make a decision, is lifestyle sufficient or we need to add on drugs. And there's a very common myth among the patient, doctor, why I need to be on the drugs? Oh, <coughs> I won't start that because once you are on drugs, you are on the lifelong drugs. Yes. Can't it be controlled with the just diet and exercise? There's a yeah. commonest belief among the minds of the various patients. So I think the point being brought out very well is really that medicines are an ally. They are tools to help us conquer diabetes or control diabetes, as we were saying. They are not our enemies. Diabetes is the enemy. Medicine will help us control that in conjunction with other things that Dr. Joshi is going to tell us about. Is it only about medication, uh, Shashank? I mean, you know, really, uh, diabetes, medicine, what is your take on that? So, Amrish, you are very right. It's not just about medicines. It's actually a myth that diabetes is equal to medicine, as Subhash was saying. I think it's about motivation. It's about monitoring and medicine. So I think the three M's are motivation for good lifestyle adherence, right. cutting the food, doing physical activity, monitoring regularly the glucose level, the lipid levels, monitoring regularly, going to the doctor regularly itself is monitoring. And then comes medicines. Medicine are the integral part of diabetes management, but I think motivation as well as monitoring are equally important or probably more important in the long-term commitment for controlling diabetes and so, living happily with diabetes. See, it is important to recognize that a patient should not get distressed yes. that I have diabetes, my world has ended. Yes. In fact, he should smile, live happily with diabetes yes. and live long. Yes. In fact, I think people who monitor and are motivated live longer than normal yes. individuals. Yes. It is not just a matter of uh, giving a tablet or not giving a tablet. It is a matter of achieving a good glycemic control. Yes. So long as lifestyle alone helps you to do that, Absolutely. so long as you remain motivated uh, in that uh, segment, is fair enough. But we also know as clinicians of that collective 100 years experience you talked <laughs> about, that a big chunk of people down the line at some stage would need some medical help. Yes. And that should not be poor poor, that needs yes. to be. Absolutely. So a judicious combination of lifestyle and medication, keeping in mind that the targets are met. So when you meet your physician, talk about what goal you need to achieve and look at those numbers and see if you're actually achieving those goals with whatever measures you're taking. Don't run away from medication. And coming to an even bigger point here, uh, you know, when we talk of medication for diabetes, the pictures that, you know, that the mind conjures up are always of insulin and injections and you know, boiling <coughs> syringes and all those things. Should it be the first therapy? Should it be saved as a last resort? Where do you place that, Dr. Chaudhary? Well, once again, as has already been pointed out, uh, diabetes is a varied condition. It's not one single entity. So in the type 1 diabetes, insulin is the number one treatment. However, in the common type of diabetes that we see, type 2 diabetes, Insulin also is required in a significant proportion of individuals and we should not delay it too long because this may end up in development of untreatable or irreversible complications. And that's a huge price to pay. So I think a very important point, again, all specialists, all endocrinologists, all diabetologists believe that insulin should be used for diabetes as and when indicated. So please don't run away from insulin if your doctor has advised you to use it. There's one other area moving to a totally different sphere of treatment, you know, which is especially relevant for Asian communities, especially India. Uh, and that is the use of alternative therapies, non-allopathic therapies, non-Western therapies, if you may. Uh, Dr. Joshi, you have some experience with that. You have some comments to make on use of alternative therapies for diabetes management. So I think there is nothing like an alternative therapy for diabetes. It's complementary therapy. And that's the right term to use. And I think we need to be very cautious. In type 1 diabetes, the treatment is replacement with insulin because insulin is what our body needs. In type gestational diabetes, again, it's insulin. In secondary diabetes, again, it is insulin. But in type 2 diabetes, in pre-diabetes or early type 2 diabetes, some of these bioactives can be used. But they need systematic evidence under scientific scrutiny. In fact, the longest surviving and the best anti-diabetic drug today is metformin. What is metformin? 
200 years back, it is a plant-based extract from France. That is Sadafuli, which is a plant which is available in India. And that has been systematically researched and they crystallized guanidine derivatives. From that guanidine derivatives, they made metformin and we use it. So, in fact, most of the allopathic medicines which we are using today are extracts either of plant-based medicine or are actually chemically derived. But they are not harmful. They are equally useful. So, I think there is a role for complementary medicines with bioactives, with systematic research to be needed, particularly in pre-diabetes area or in early diabetes of type 2, it may be useful. But the only word of caution is that in type 1 diabetes or sure. people whose pancreas do not make insulin, insulin is the natural treatment for diabetes. One of the concerns that many individuals have is or that allopathic medicines have side effects, the alternative medicines do not have side effects. That is not true. That, that's that's not also true. not true yeah. because the effectiveness may be there for both, mm -hmm. but that has not been systematically studied in a randomized yes. controlled fashion. And the safety and pharmacovigilance for yeah. complementary medicines is equally important. Yes, many absolutely. of them have metals, many of them have steroids, and that has to be systematically absolutely. documented. So we need so to use an evidence-based path, really, really, whether it's yes. complementary medicine Completely or agree. allopathic. I thank you. I think the, the, the panel is pretty, pretty uh, much in, in sync on that that uh, it's okay to use these therapies maybe in, in very early or pre-diabetic or prevention stage, but they need more systematic study. And we cannot presume that they are safe unless we have proper clinical trial data as we have for, for, the, for the other molecules that we use commonly. So I think that's an important point. And you know, when we talk of treating diabetes with all these measures, Dr. Wangnu, uh, there's one fact we haven't discussed. Uh, one aspect we haven't discussed, and that is really about the role of the patient. You know, do you think that diabetes can be managed by all of us prescribing the right medicines, whether it's insulin or whether it's tablets, or do you think the patient needs to be empowered? What is your view on that? It's not the only the doctor's prescription which is going to help the patient. Patient empowerment means the patient should be knowledgeable enough, patient should be aware, patient should know all yeah. the aspects of the diabetes and its complication over a period of time. So if we tell the patient, we tell the patient, patient should be his own doctor and he should know each and every aspect of diabetes, whether his diet, exercise, the pills he has to take it, what kind of complications he is going to develop in the, over the long term, how to detect the early detection of complications so that you can manage them at the right time, so you can delay the onset of the complications complications. So the importance of patient empowerment uh, is brought out very clearly here. You know, we sometimes say that treating diabetes or relationship between a diabetes specialist and the patient is that of a coach and a player. Absolutely. So whatever Anil Kumble might do, it's Virat Kohli who has to deliver. Mm -hmm. So on this note, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with you with much more interesting information. Healthcare partner. So, as we know, diabetes is a lifestyle disease that impacts the whole family. So, Dr. Zargar, especially in the Indian environment, what do you say about the role of family in management of diabetes? As uh, Dr. Wangno very aptly said, patient needs to be empowered. I would say that this concept needs to be expanded to the whole family. Because this is a family, you know. When you talk about diet, when you're talking about lifestyle, probably it means that there might be something wrong at the familial level with Absolutely. the lifestyle. The whole Absolutely. family needs to correct that lifestyle in terms of whatever time they spend on exercise, whatever time, how, the way they cook their food, the way their daily food habits are. So it's a great opportunity that the whole family creates a healthy diet atmosphere, you know, healthy eating that's, that's uh, fantastic, environment. That's fantastic, Dr. Zagar. I think that's and a great point. it's extremely important, rather than isolating this one individual. And in fact, it might also help us in putting some breaks on that 
huge epidemic of diabetes that we have in our own country. So you as the patient, mm -hmm. as, as an index really to modify lifestyle for the whole family. Great message. Dr. Joshi, there's a lot of talk about weight and diabetes. And do you think people can cure their diabetes by losing weight? Well, we are thin fat Indians, so we have more <laughs> fat. And therefore, if you lose weight, your sugars will get mm. under control. That's for sure. But there is no cure. It is control. Remember one thing, two-year results, five-year results don't make you cure. So don't get carried away by these false claims. Lose weight, stay healthy, reduce and chop off your fat. You have, glucose will be under control. Great. Uh, another challenge that all of us face, you know, is, is, is that patients will come once for a prescription. Now, do you think patients need to come to the doctor regularly or be in touch regularly? You want yeah, to talk about uh, that? Yeah, unfortunately, the answer is yes. For a condition that's lifelong, it has to be a periodic monitoring, periodic uh, consultation. And because uh, the condition is progressive, it's not static. So one-time prescription will not do. And I would suggest that... Uh, for an average run-of-the-mill uh, individual with diabetes, which is re who is even reasonably controlled at this point of time from all aspects, at least twice in a year consultation with a physician uh, should be uh, so, followed. So what Dr. Chaudhary is telling you, it's important to remain in touch with your physician, whether you do it face-to-face, -face, sometimes electronically, whatever method you choose. But it's good to be in touch. Don't take it as a one-off. Uh, Dr. Malmi, there's always this thing about patients measuring their blood glucose, uh, whether they should do that or not, and how frequently, and what's the yeah, role? Yeah, the blood sugar monitoring, what they call the home monitoring of blood glucose, or the self-monitoring of blood glucose, is an essential part of the diabetes management. Mm. I think you cannot do away with it, because the if you want to remain on the target about your blood sugar readings, you have to monitor blood sugar frequently. Frequently doesn't mean that you have to monitor sugar Every day, that depends whether you are on insulin, whether you are on the pills, or you are on a diet and exercise, that your doctor will tell how frequently you have to monitor blood sugar. Because that is important to modify your treatment time to time, as Shubhankar told you that diabetes is a progressive disease, and without monitoring, you cannot be on the target, you cannot prevent the diabetic ongoing complications. The monitoring, monitoring should be at the top, and it should be mandated to tell the patient how frequently you have to monitor depending on a doctor's advice. But, but as you know, Dr. Wagnu, patients always complain that, you know, the machine is not accurate. You are right, Amrish, yeah, because the, the monitoring, they take the capillary blood, and when they do the whole blood from the laboratory, there has to be a difference around, say, 8 to 10 percent. But the modern glucometers are basically been calibrated more accurate towards the blood sugars. Yes. So you can rely upon the modern glucometer, which they have been calibrated, and that is the only tool by which you can monitor frequently. You can go to the lab quite often to do the blood sugars. So I will tell that the yes. recent, the current glucometers are one of the most fair enough. Empowering the yes, usual. yes, absolutely. Yeah, that is real empowerment, real empowerment to be able to see your blood glucose. See your blood sugar yes, and modify yes. the treatment. So is there any other monitoring required? If I'm a diabetic, I just check my glucose and I'm happy, it's fine. Once so it's very hour. important yeah. to know how an aggregate blood sugar is on an average, how well a person is doing. It was like, we do every three months a test known as hemoglobin A1C. So that, you know, if it is under the target and then you uh, tie them off with your own blood sugars, things are fine. Then apart from that, you know, having a look at one's own eyes, you know, uh, looking for the complications in terms of retinopathy, once in a year or once in three years, uh, looking at urinary proteins, how is your kidney okay, and once in a year or two, getting a cardiac evaluation done, so that whatever damage potential a bad diabetes has, it has not been properly taken care of. The damage containment mechanisms are put in place in time. So those regular monitoring is extremely so important. Really pressure. Need, yeah. Yeah, so blood pressure ahead. is something very uh, important uh, as well. Not You don't have to go to the lab to get your blood pressure done. Absolutely. That's also very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you, know, you need to catch the complications early and prevention is always better than cure. Uh, uh, one other aspect is about actual lifestyle measures. You know, we say lifestyle, lifestyle you know, exercise. So, Dr. Chaudhary, you want to enlighten us a little bit about what should a diabetic do? That's a diabetes patient do. They always ask this. Uh, yeah. What kind of exercise should I do? Yeah, exercise is very important and it's uh, partly helps you to lose weight, but even if you do not lose weight, exercise helps you in controlling your diabetes. And so, what do you do? Well, you have to find out what is convenient, what is acceptable, what is pleasurable for you. A simple measure is a brisk walk 
maybe cover three kilometers in 40 minutes or so. That should be good for most individuals. However, for the elderly, those with arthritis, bad knees, we may have to modify. And then there would be the young and the fit who like to go for tennis thrice in a week, go for swims, which are all fine, great. Mm -hmm. Beyond these also, it's now understood that uh, diabetes individuals with diabetes could also benefit, would actually benefit if they put up some form of resistance exercise, resistance training using weights or even without weights, using your own body weight, push-ups. So all these add further to improving your control of diabetes. So, Dr. Wangnu, uh, two brief comments. Uh, one, in all this gamut of exercise, where do you place yoga? yoga? Yes, among all the type of the exercise where Dr. Chaudhary told you, the yoga and meditation are equally important. Actually, equally important in the sense a lot, many studies done on the yoga and diabetes, they basically help to improve your lifestyle, basically. You remain a sort of a disciplined person. So you have to do yoga for half an hour or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and it should be under supervision of a trained yoga teacher. What kind of asanas are important for you? What kind of a disease you are having associated like arthritis, I told you, heart disease, the blood pressure. So accordingly, the asanas can be changed. So that is I am telling you, it has to be done under the supervision of a trained yoga teacher. So a judicious combination of, of aerobic exercise, strength training and yoga will probably help you a lot in managing your condition. And as we head towards the most contentious part, but we will do it in very brief today, and that is diet. Uh, Dr. Joshi, you want to enlighten people, tell us something about a diet for diabetes patients? So the biggest fads on diabetes are related to diet. <laughs> and the biggest myths about it are about diet. Mm -hmm. So I have a very simple mantra. Eat less, portion control. So whatever yeah. you're eating, eat yeah. less. Yeah. Make your breakfast, lunch, and dinner one third less. Yes. Eat less. Eat on time. Yes. Eating on time is equally important, particularly in urban environments, but even in rural environments. And eat less, eat on time, and eat the right food. Avoid fried food, sweets, you know, uh, all these substances which have been told do not eat but most people when we tell them not to eat we tend to eat more <laughs> that's human it's nature it's equally important to integrate diet and mm. eating less eating on time eating right with walk more sleep on time sleep adequately and smile yoga actually is the <laughs> word a is silent in yoga and therefore it's important that it's a lifestyle mm. but food is a sensorial pressure. Yeah. When you start thinking of food, yeah. you want to eat more. Yes. You need to do something called as mindfulness. Yes. When you think and you see food, mm -hmm. you have to be mindful to control that portion. So if you so. eat less, eat on time, eat the right food, avoid sweets, dry fruits, yeah. fried food, fast food, simple things. So I, think I think if you do simple that's, things that's and keep it simple, we can do a lot. And diet has more myths more internet, more <laughs> blogs than anything around, but the most simple mantra people forget is to eat less, yes. eat on time and eat right. So wonderful Gyan from Absolutely. Dr. Joshi. And just to conclude this, one last brief point from Dr. Zargar, and that's about this thing about artificial sweeteners, because somebody's going to ask that, so you might as well answer. Uh, absolutely, you know, uh, first thing on, you know, briefly, First, uh, whenever we give a diet counseling, yeah. first it was important is what are the patient's own preferences. And you know, in our own country, people like Lada Mita, as you very rightly uh, said it. <laughs> and is there a substitute to that? Mm -hmm. You know, getting the same thing, sanitizing the same thing, but making it a bit equi equally meter. Yes. As it's doable, uh, in the current times, you have very safe sweeteners available. I don't find much problem in that. And it, in fact, might add a bit of a quality to the life of the patient because he is now doing what he is pleasurable to him, as uh, Shashank was saying. You know, it should it should also be a pleasant activity. It should not be food should not become like taking a medicine. It should continue to give the pleasure Absolutely. that one would have, Absolutely. and this might add that pleasant uh, pleasure to it. But I will say one thing: they should be avoided in pregnant ladies and the small yeah, children, yeah, sure, basically. Sure. That Live should be judicious. Yeah, judicious, judicious use judicious. of the judicious. artificial yeah. sweetener. So I think I think the the we come to the end of the discussion today with the message that you need to maintain a good quality of life in diabetes, don't get overpowered by the condition, control diabetes, use basic normal advice from your doctor, don't go for fad diets, don't go for any extreme measures. By and large, since 40% of 
of us in the metros at the age of 60 are diabetic, I think all of us need to learn to live with diabetes. That will help us and our families lead healthier and longer lives. Thank you. Your reliable healthcare partner.